everybody welcome back to my channel in today's video i want to share seven wardrobe curation tips that have changed my life these are things that i've learned over the last couple years of really cultivating my wardrobe that have made a big difference it's required a lot of trial and error and my hope is that by me going through all of these steps i'm able to save you a little bit of heartache in your own wardrobe journey so let's get started first up is that progress is always better than perfection when i first started this whole journey I became obsessed with perfection I did one major wardrobe call and I got things down to a really good place that I was really happy with and I became totally fixated on finding the perfect white shirt the perfect pair of jeans the absolute perfect piece to fill the holes in my wardrobe and in doing that I really lost sight of I think what the larger focus should be and for me that's personal style and using what you already have so rather than focusing on how I could mix and match the clothes already in my closet and really start to get a feel for what I loved and what I didn't love and really start to narrow in on things that I enjoyed wearing, I focused all of my attention on what I didn't have. And focusing outward like that was really counterproductive for me. I wasted a lot of time. And as soon as I made that shift and really started looking at what I did have and then go from there, it was a game changer for me. Similarly, my next tip is to always set a budget, stay within that budget, and then address your wardrobe goals based on that budget. So let's say when you start this process, you want to only buy things from handmade, sustainable makers. But when you sit down and create your budget, that's just not going to work for every purchase in your wardrobe. That's okay. All you can do is the best you can with what you have. So my recommendation is to always check secondhand and vintage. That's a wonderful way to find things that are unique and interesting for your wardrobe. And also things from these brands that you might not be able to afford otherwise. It's something I've done and continue to do many times. And then I also always recommend being really intentional with your purchases. So having a clear focus for your wardrobe will really allow you to do that. And then of course, once you do buy something, take very good care of it and really use it and enjoy it in your wardrobe and make sure that it's getting the respect that it deserves in your closet. So don't buy something with the intention of wearing it once and instead buy it and care for it as if it's something that you spent a large portion of your income on. My next tip is that what is perfect for someone else doesn't have to be perfect for you. So just like I mentioned in the first one, it's very easy to compare yourself to other people, especially now that we have access to people's wardrobes in a way that we've never had before. And you're able to see exactly the items that they have and how they wear them and how they work for their wardrobes and their lifestyles. And it can be really tempting as you're going through this process to say, okay, my style is X. And X style, based on what I've seen, requires a white button down, a pair of dark wash denim, and a pair of black pants, for example. So you set out to find those, but the more you wear them, they just don't work for your life. It is so important that you're honest with yourself when that happens, and you focus on developing your own unique personal style rather than copying what someone else enjoys wearing. My next tip will probably come as no surprise to you if you've seen any of my past videos, but that is to have not only a color palette, but also a year-round color palette. So when I first started, I had three color palettes. I had a color palette that was just my neutrals or my base colors, and then I had colors that I wore just in spring, summer. And then I had colors that I wore just in fall, winter. But as I have slowly gone on this process, all of those colors have morphed together. And I've realized that I have a color palette that I can wear and enjoy all year long with one or two colors that I tend to reserve exclusively for fall, winter, or spring, summer. And it's been a really big help. Along those same lines, I recommend focusing in on materials, fabrics, and patterns that can also work for year-round wear. So this is something, again, like my color palette, I've evolved over the last couple years, and it's really been helpful. When I first started this whole journey, I did capsules in a very strict sense. So I would set aside about 30 or 40 pieces for that season and then take everything else and put it away in storage. And that worked for me for quite a while. I really liked the clear division between things. It helped me really focus in on what I did have in my closet at that particular time, get creative, really understand what I liked, and ultimately move then to the next step where I am now. And this step involves me no longer separating things and putting them away. 
So now I still pull out capsules for myself every season, but I put them at the front of my closet and have everything else still hanging there. And what's that, what that has done for me is allowed me to mix and match a little bit more easily and really enjoy things all year long. So this was a process. I don't recommend this straight out the gate if you're still quite overwhelmed with your wardrobe and you don't really have a clear focus on what you love and your style because I think it will become too confusing. But if you're at a good place with all of that, you've been doing capsules for a while, and you feel like you know your style, this is a really helpful way to approach dressing. As you go throughout this wardrobe cultivation process, I think customization and personalization should always be at the forefront. It's the focus of this channel and finding your own unique style and things that are perfect for you and unique to you. But I think it's also nice if you pay special attention to things that only you can really wear. So beyond just an individual shirt, for example, or how you style that shirt, I recommend slowly incorporating pieces that maybe have your initials on them, or maybe an heirloom piece that only you have because only your family had it, or something that it represents a travel or a trip that you took and you picked it up as a souvenir, something that when you wear it really tells the story of you. Having things that are perfectly unique to me make me feel like even the same pieces worn over and over and over again are a little bit more special. And last but not least is don't get rid of everything. This is so tempting and a trap that I fell into when I first started this whole process. I did one giant wardrobe call and I was a little too aggressive with how many things I got rid of and I ended up having to rebuy some things that I missed as I went throughout the capsules that I was creating and really realizing that some things I wasn't so honest with myself about, I actually did wear. So I had to go back out and find them and then I was money wasted and time wasted. So my recommendation instead, and something that I've learned over the years, is to, instead of getting rid of things physically, taking them out of your house, donating them or selling them or giving them to a friend, take things you're a little bit unsure about, put them in a container and put them out of sight. And then over the process, every time you think of something, you can go grab it from that space and add it back to your closet. I think it's a much uh, better way to approach the process. It's a lot uh, less aggressive in a sense, and I think a lot more um, sustainable also, because like I mentioned, you're not gonna run into the issues of having to rebuy things and then blow your budget that you set aside for something new on something you already had, but you were a little too aggressive with getting rid of it in the first place. And there you have it. Those are seven wardrobe curation tips that have totally changed my life. They're things I've learned over the years that I've been doing this and things I hope will help you in the process as well. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I would love to know in the comments down below the main obstacle that you're running into with wardrobe cultivation and wardrobe curation, because maybe I can address that in a future video. And like always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day.